So to finish up the segment on in-ear monitoring, I wanted to talk about something that everybody wants and is really tough to get, which is ambience. They want to get a sense of being on stage as opposed to having the band stuffed in their ears. And while in-ear monitoring solves a lot of problems for the engineers, uh, getting rid of stage volume, it creates a bunch of other problems which you may or may not want to have. So that was the assembling of the band. So this is my band. I'm the drummer because the drummer is always back here somewhere. This is the bass player because he's cool. This is the guitar player. I think this guy plays tambourine or something. This has to be the lead singer because she's just the lead singer and I like ukulele. So this is your band in real life and this is how it feels on stage. I sit here, I hear this person over here, I hear this person over here. I occasionally hear this person. They don't do much, but that's like most tambourine players. So all of this is going on, and now I'm being asked by the sound guy to use in-ear monitors. So what ends up happening is I take the lead singer and I put her center, and then I got two choices. I can put everybody in mono, which looks kind of like this, where everything's in mono. Or I can say, let's put some things in stereo, but because I'm a drummer, I also want myself in mono. So I end up being kind of either in front of or right behind the lead singer in the mix. But in the case of stereo or mono, because of frequency issues and the way things work when you go to stereo mix, even stereo is a big compromise, which is why surround sound was developed. So the question is, when you're using in-ears, where you really only got a left and right source, how do you get something that sounds better than this? Because right now, I got the tambourine and, I think this is the bass player, messing with one ear. I got the singer in the center, but she's kind of getting in the way of my drum mix, and I don't particularly like that because I like drums. And then, I don't know, is this a guitar player? It's hard to remember who, what these guys are. But anyway, so you have this going on, and this is not what I want. What I want is what I heard before I had in ears, but then again, the sound guy in the audience don't want to hear that. So what you need is something called clang, and clang is not a noise you get by bashing two pans together. Clang is a new processing system that creates 3D in-ear environments. It does it through a series of magic tricks that I think even Penn and Teller would be shocked by. And the first time I heard it was at a trade show a few years ago, back before COVID, and I put on some headphones and I listened to a 3D monitor mix. And by 3D, what I mean is, here's my lead singer, here's me, here's my bass player, so I would like him over here, tambourine player, I prefer to put them over here, like outside the room, which actually in the case of Clang, I could actually do that. And then I've got, is this a guitar player? Yeah, let's put the guitar player there. This is the guitar player. And now it's the saxophone player, he's over there. So now in the clang environment, this is what it sounds like to my ears. So even though I'm wearing two earbuds, this creates a simulation of space and it does more than just space. The clarity of each instrument is preserved like it was in a live environment, not processed sounding and not sounding like some sort of bizarre phase trick. So I've got that going and then I decide, you know, I really, I want the bass player over here. So I'm gonna do that. And then I actually, I want my drums to be elevated. So I wanna put my drums up here. I can actually do that and climb. Or I can put my drums under the table if for some bizarre reason I wanted to do that. But that's basic clang. Then there is enhanced clang, which is way beyond in terms of spatial imaging. And all of this creates a natural sounding environment. 
Now, everybody's trying to get ambience by pulling one ear out, which is a horrible idea as discussed in a prior video, or using microphones into the in-ears to pick up the stage sound, which is still either stereo or mono. It's somewhat out of phase, and it doesn't do a good job of helping to resolve these problems. Clang does. So you basically got an issue of you can have this, or you can have this as your sound field. Now, when you do something like Clang, and to be honest, I've never heard anything like Clang, so it's hard to say what else might do that. When you put in Clang, if you've ever heard it, you never want to go back to any other way of listening to any kind of headphones or in your monitors, because it's just so disappointing. Now, Clang is not cheap. Uh, depending on how many seats you buy in terms of your processor and everything else, it's multi-thousands of dollars, but the in-ear monitoring solutions that try to offer ambience and still don't get you any kind of 3D imaging are multi-thousand dollars. So the manufacturers who have built-in microphones that are adjustable by iPad apps and all sorts of other ways of getting ambience on stage still does not get you this. Now, there's no way to really represent this in a video, which is why I'm using my friends here. Oh, and by the way, these friends came on board to my house during COVID my wife decided we needed something to make us happy in the first month of COVID when we were all locked down by our governor. So first we bought her, and then I think we got this, I think we may have had this guy already. Then we bought this guy. Now when they're in the window, I can't do that right now because my neighbors are out making too much noise. But the excitement we had every time we get a new one from Amazon, the Amazon truck would show up, we put another one in the window. It's a way of, we kind of got through the first couple of months of COVID with these buddies, which is why they're my friends. But in the, the world of all of this stuff, when you've heard Clang, there's really no going back. Now you can't demo it with my toys, but you can demo it online. How they've done this, I don't know, but if you go to the App Store and you download Clang, K-L-A, I think it's N-N-G, there's an app you download. There's a 16 track demo in the app that you can listen to in mono, stereo, 3D, or enhanced 3D. And within the app, you can pan things around yourself while it's playing back. Now, once you've heard the difference between mono and stereo in it, you understand why stereo was invented. But once you hear 3D headphones or in-ears, you just wonder why anybody would ever go back to stereo. So I recommend downloading the app, playing with it, really uh, taking a shot at it because the in-ear world is, is really a battle. The band on stage doesn't want it because they don't want to collapse their world to this. They really want their world to be that. And the sound guy doesn't want all the sound from the guitar amps and bass amps and all this other stuff on stage and neither does the audience because it just turns it all into mud. But this is the only thing I've ever heard that solves both problems. It really would make the band happy and it really makes the audience happy. And it's not insanely expensive for fixed installations. Now by that I mean whether it's a uh, house of worship where you've got a band that really wants to hear incredibly well on stage or you've got a band on the road that is the same band all the time and you, you get this all set up. The, the apps that they've got, they've got iPad access, they've got hardware access, they've got all kinds of different ways of controlling this. And you can get, I think, up to 16 users on a frame. When I looked at the dollars involved, I think it's worth every penny. So anyway, that was just my thought for the day on a new product. Clang is the bomb. I'm trying to get the factory to give me a free one. I don't know, maybe this video will do the job. Video guys, get this out there so that people can start liking it. So maybe Klein will send me a free unit. They never did before, but the one I heard at the trade show at Infocom was spectacular. And the people who developed it are in love with music and I'm gonna stop talking.